I'm Trey Leatherwood with Computer Clarity, and we're bringing you this series of short training videos teaching you how to use your computer better, covering Windows, Word, Excel, Outlook, security software, and many other applications. We appreciate you watching this video and truly hope that it helps. Look for our other videos on YouTube, Facebook, or on our website at www.computerclarity.com. This video is a brief general overview of the Microsoft operating system, Windows Vista, and its primary areas. Much of what I cover will also apply to other operating systems like Windows XP or Windows 7, and some of it will also apply to Macintosh operating systems. Now, first of all, an operating system is different from an application or a program in that an operating system is actually the environment in which the application runs. So the primary functions of any operating system is to provide the user with an easy and graphical way to start, launch programs, create files, organize files, and do the other things that we do on computer without having to type in each and every command. Commands are actually delivered to the computer through the mouse and the keyboard, primarily the mouse, by double-clicking or clicking on something or dragging something. All that actually means special commands to the operating system that we don't have to type in anymore. So what are the main areas of the Windows environment? The desktop, which is this big area that we'll talk about first. Explorer, which is something that the operating system uses to give you access to files. Control panels, that's what the operating system uses to let you control how the environment works. And then we'll also talk about the roles of applications and networking inside an operating system. Now this desktop that you have out in front of you, that's the main area where a computer user makes files, launches programs, and controls the other functions in the computer. On the desktop you have icons like shortcuts. You know shortcuts by the arrow, and we'll go into shortcuts into more detail in another video. You have folders. These folders can contain individual files that can be moved around to the desktop or moved from the desktop. Then down at the bottom of this whole desktop area, you have a start button and the quick launch area. The quick launch area may or may not be on your computer if you have that as one of your options. Next to the quick launch bar, you have the application bar. These are application buttons. Each one of these buttons represents an application that is currently running. So for instance, I can click on this button and it will bring up this application that I wasn't using at that moment in time. Back, it brings it back up to the foreground on the desktop. Next to that bar, you have the system tray. These icons represent programs that are running in the background. And you can control some of the way that these things work by right-clicking on the individual icons there. And then on the other side of the system tray, you have the clock. That shows the system time. Now on the far side, I save this one for last for the desktop. This is a start button and this is really where you go to get to almost everything else in your computer. If you touch the start button, this gives you a list of the programs that you use most often in this computer and it gives you a way to get to your personal files, your documents, pictures, music, recent items, your computer, your network, and control panels and several other things. If you don't see the program that you're looking for right here, you can go to All Programs, and this gives you a list of the programs listed out as they are individually or organized into folders. So, for instance, Microsoft Office has a whole bunch of programs inside it. Each one of these is a separate application or a separate program. Now, Windows gives you access to your files and the other files that are in your computer through Explorer. Explorer is something you, that you get when you open up computer computer shows a list of the hard drives that you have in your computer and DVD drives or CD drives, any other kind of drives that you have, plus network locations. You can get to the various parts of the file structure in your computer by clicking on your name or on the, the C drive. And then keep expanding the folders until you find the file that you're actually looking for. I'll go into more detail about Windows Explorer in another video. Now control panels in Windows, you get to again by hitting the start button and then going to control panel. And this gives you a whole area of the ways that you can control 
how Windows functions. There's two different ways to view this. If you've never been here before, or if you haven't changed it to classic view, this is the way that you'd see the control panel. It's separated into the different areas or different mm, sections of the control panel. So you have system maintenance, and this will give you a way to back up your computer or go into different parts of Windows. Security lets you check for updates. You have hardware sounds, internet. Each one of these areas actually lets you do something different. Now, this is not the way that it looks in Windows XP, and so you may be used to seeing the control panel like this, in which case it's not categorized, but you have all of the different utilities in the control panel available to you. And in another video, I'll go into much greater detail about the control panel. Now, as I said in the beginning, the operating system is merely the environment in which applications run. Applications are the programs that you're familiar with, the things that you actually use in your computer. So for instance, if I wanted to run an application like Excel, I would double click on Excel and that opens this program in which I can start using and functioning inside the computer. And this is how I create files. This particular program creates Excel files or spreadsheet files. Now, closing the, the application. You can minimize, you can maximize the application, or you can close the application with the buttons on the top right hand corner. One of the other primary functions of a computer is to network, or allow one computer to connect to another computer. That happens inside the networking area. And if you open that, then you can see a list of the computers that are within networking range of your computer. Now this does not include the internet. The internet is done through the network, but it is outside the network. So we quickly covered just the basic areas of the Windows operating system, the desktop, explorer, and control panels, and how you can use applications and networking in this Windows operating system environment. In other videos, I go into much greater detail about each one of these specific areas, but that's a real brief overview. Thank you for watching our video instructional series. I'm Trey Leatherwood with Computer Clarity. If you have any questions about this video or any other computer issues, please go to our website at www.computerclarity.com or call us at 877-434-8822.